Good evening and blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. We're so glad that you have uh, joined with us tonight as we uh, begin to look into the word of the Lord, find out what riches God has for us. And uh, praise the Lord, he does have riches. He has blessings from his word. His word changes us, transforms us, and renews us and uh, brings great joy into our lives if we'll just allow it to have its way in our life. So praise the name of the Lord. Glad you're here with us tonight. And uh, the title of tonight's message is Dine and Dash. And uh, today in our modern day language, this little phrase is uh, to go into a restaurant and order something to eat and eat it and run out the door and not pay for it. Well, spiritually, I want to talk to you tonight about how so many Christians uh, dine and dash. In other words, they come and they read the Word of God, and before they really let it set in so that they can pay the cost of living that Word, they leave and uh, don't digest it the way we should. And again, when I say so many uh, Christians, I'm talking about all of us. We've done it. Um, we've come to the Word of God and read our three or four scriptures and never truly meditated on that Word day and night and allowed it to have its effect. And its effect is we begin to lay down our life to a greater extent for the glory of God because the Word continues to change us and transform us, to renew us. Uh, the Word says that we put on Christ by the renewing of our minds. And so we have to spend some time when God gave me this title this afternoon and uh, this message, I just started to reflect. You know, I, I watch a lot of animal shows. I, I like to watch that. And, uh, you know, you see a deer or antelope come to a watering hole and it bends over and starts to drink. And then all of a sudden it is uh, startled or something gets its attention and it pulls up away from the water and uh, then something else moves or what, they, what startled them, they recognize it and they take off running. So they barely got any nourishment at all, barely any water. And they're gonna have to come back to it again. And if that continues to happen over and over again, that antelope is going to become uh, in a desperate situation for thirst. And then it comes, becomes dangerous because it can stay at the water too long and not see the enemy under the water a crocodile and pretty soon the deer is not uh, drinking its uh, sustenance its water it's the meal for the crocodile and the crocodile is eating its meal so we can do that ourselves we stay too long uh, away from really studying and meditating and growing in the word and we just sort of feel like well if I just read a few scriptures I'll be okay and I pray that's not the case for for all of you that are listening, but I know it's been that case in my life at times, you know. I've been a Christian since I was 13, and there's been times where I was just very intent in study and prayer and seeking God and wanting His Word to come alive. And then there's been times when I just read the Word and walked away and thought that was good enough. And uh, sooner than later, I found out it wasn't good enough. Dining and dashing only brings trouble into your heart, trouble into your life. We have to pay the cost. And that's what the Lord Jesus said. He said, count the cost before you start to build the house. And we are the house. And it's built by the word of God, the Holy Spirit, and the precious blood of Jesus Christ that redeemed us and made, his, made us his temple. So as we, as we look at this, we want to remember that when we come before the Lord, we're in a safe place. We don't have to worry about the enemy. We're in a safe place because in his word is that safe harbor and uh, we're protected by God. And if we'll just get in that safe place, no matter what's going on around us, no matter if we're in, in somebody's prison or jail or something's happening in our lives, when we're in that word and in the presence of God and we're asking that word to become alive inside of us, we have found a safe place, a place of rest, a place of peace, but it's also a place of change. And that change is a great and awesome thing that can happen in our lives. In the book of Revelation in uh, chapter 10, verses eight through 11, uh, we see that John is given a, a book, a little book, and he's told to eat it. And so I wanna read these scriptures and then see what happened after he ate it and it had its effect on him. 
It says, Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again and said, Go, take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel, who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and I will make your, it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth. Then I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it, and it was as sweet as honey in my mouth. But when I had eaten it, my stomach became bitter. And, it, and he said to me, You must prophesy again about many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. And so we don't know what was in this little book, but we have a, a good idea because of the prophecy that he was going to give. And uh, so when we look at this and just looking at these scriptures and not talking about the prophecy he was going to, going to speak forth, um, we, we want to know and recognize that he had to eat it. He had to devour it. And he had to consume it all, not just part, not just what he liked, you know, uh, well, I'll eat a little bit of this page and a little bit of that page. He had to eat the whole little book. And so as he ate it, it was sweet. Going in, it was sweet, but then it had an effect on him. And it had a change, a dramatic change. It became bitter in his stomach. So he was getting, if you will, sick to his stomach. There was uh, a feeling of being very uncomfortable in his inner being. And folks, sometimes the word of God is that way with us. He's going to prophesy about the two prophets who come in the, in the tribulation period and how they bring all types of disaster and plagues upon the earth and that men were going to be basically judged. Uh, and so that became very difficult because all of us want to save people. We want people to, to know the glory of our King and of our God, but sometimes the word is very tough. It's very straightforward because God is dealing with sin and we, we see it as judgment or harshness of God, but God sees it as if I bring this, hopefully they will uh, open their heart to me and receive me as Lord and Savior. And uh, he's going to bring his word to pass. And judgment is coming in the last days. And so we have to be aware of that. But in our walk right now, where we're at in our lives in Christ Jesus, there's still times where God's dealing with me. And sometimes God's word uh, really stirs up my inner being. And when I say that, it's not a comfortable feeling. It's not something that is so easily digested. It's something that is really strong and powerful that we know we have to release to God and we have to begin maybe to speak it. Maybe it's, it's going to someone who has, has sin in their life and God wants us to go and be, be straightforward with them and talk with them and reveal that to them and tell them that judgment is coming if there's, if there's no repentance. And that's not always comfortable to our flesh. So he does this, and all of a sudden, he's going to be able to prophesy. Well, when the word of God is coming into you, it's going to come back the way God desires it to, whether it's a word of prophecy or, or if it's a word of uh, encouragement or if it's just repeating the word into someone else's life. It's speaking that word through faith into someone else's life. So we need to let the word have an effect so we can't just dine and dash, eat real quick and run out. And uh, so many people get up in the morning and just read a few scriptures and then they run out because I got to get to work. I got to take the kids to school. Uh, I got to go to the gym. I've got to go to the grocery store. And we don't spend that time getting that word in. So what, what is going in really isn't having its effect the way it should. Obviously, it's going to have some effect, but not the total effect. And God said, you want to receive your full reward. And I want my full reward. So I have to let this word uh, sort of, you know, stew inside of me, if you will, and think about it because there's a cost. I'm going to have to go and speak the word of God. And some men aren't going to like me. Some people are going to reject me. Maybe it's a change in my life and my flesh isn't going to like it. But there's a cost that has to be paid to walk in the fullness of the word because, again, God tells us to die to self, to renew our mind and put on Christ. 
And that sounds wonderful, renew your mind and put on Christ. But if you're putting on Christ, you're dying to self, self-desire, self-will, which I talk about a lot, folks. Now, those of you that listen to me, it's about growing up and maturing in Christ Jesus. Uh, the Word should be changing us on a daily basis. We should be being renewed in Him. And uh, the promises of God should be being established in our hearts because the flesh is dropping to the side. You know, the Word can't get established if there's no room for it to grow. If there's only stony ground, if there's, there's only weedy ground inside of our heart, they're, they're, the Word's just not going to grow the way it should inside of us. So that, it, that, if you will, is dining and dashing. We haven't paid the cost. We haven't taken out the weeds. We haven't taken out the stones. We haven't let that word settle in and get rooted inside of us so that it can uh, prosper in us and therefore cause us to prosper. And I think every one of us want to prosper spirit, soul, and body, you know, because that's what God declares for us. And uh, so if that's our desire, we have to take time. You know, it's sort of like coming, we're in the holiday season. We just had Thanksgiving and coming into celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ uh, with Christmas. And, you know, you think about those big meals that you eat and they're so good and there's so much fellowship and there's so much life in that. And then you sort of sit back and relax and digest it and because you, you can't hardly move, you've eaten so much. Well, we need to be like that in the Word. We need to be eating the Word, not, not hurrying up to get out because we don't want to pay the cost of that Word. We don't want to walk in the experience and the power of that Word. We need to meditate on that. Think about what God has spoken to us and allow it to bring change and transformation to us. In Jeremiah, the Word of the Lord, I love Jeremiah 15 and uh, it's just powerful in verse 16 because it speaks to us. It says, your words were found and I ate them. I consumed them. I devoured them. I was, I was so hungry for your word. Now, folks, we have to develop that, that hunger, that appetite in Christ Jesus. You know, we can be Christians that uh, love the Lord, but we really don't have an appetite to get in his word. And we only get in his word when things are going wrong or um, we've got scared away from the water hole and we know there's a crocodile uh, lurking that wants to take us. The enemy's ready to take us. He's seeking whom he may devour. Uh, then we may come back and get a little more diligent, but we, we keep putting ourselves in harm's way because we're not doing it on a daily basis so that we're getting stronger and stronger, more alert to the ways of the enemy, more alert to the voice of the Lord and knowing his voice and responding to it quickly. So we need to be a people that, that understand what his word is and really eat it and come after it. And look at the results. He says, and your word was to me joy and gladness or rejoicing of my heart. It was, it was joy and rejoicing. It was joy and Hallelujah. There was a, an exciting, uh, pr precious, awesome time in God. His word should make you full of joy. When you're studying it, if you're not digesting it and either getting bitterness in you because, wow, I got to deal with that and God's word is true, or you're not getting joy in your heart, then you're probably not really paying the price that's necessary to uh, eat that meal, to really have that meal and have it change your life and have it really nourish you. So it's, it's just such an awesome thing that we don't have to eat quickly and run, even though our life tells us that we do. Our life is constantly telling us, you know, you got this to do, this to do, this to do. You got to go here. You got to go there. But church, you know, God would have us slow down especially when it comes to eating his meal. Everything else we can do quickly, but when it comes to eating his meal, we need to slow down and we need to, to truly listen and we need to ask God to apply this in our hearts and in our minds. So it says, I found your word and I ate it and your word was joy and rejoicing in me. The word of God talks about trembling with rejoicing. 
you know, so excited in God. You're just sort of shaking under that, that joy that is so ecstatic that you just can't hold still. That's what the word should be to you. Or it should be bitter in your stomach and you're going, oh, and you still can't sit still because, oh man, God wants us to be a people who are stirred by his word. If we're not getting stirred again, we're not eating it. We're just playing games. We're just dining and dashing, eating real quick and getting out. Maybe not even finishing all that's on the plate because the door for us to get away is open right now. So again, the enemy's always supplying something to pull us away from the word of God. He's always supplying uh, something to do, something to think about. Uh, he's always giving us something to worry about. He's always trying to give us something to lust after. He's always causing problems, storms in our life. But we have to remember we need to stay at the watering hole, at the, the, the word of the living God, and allow it to have its way in our life. You know, the word of God is, if you will, God's economy. It's uh, the currency of heaven. And uh, it is so powerful because the more words you have in you, the richer you are in the things of the Spirit. The richer you are in the knowledge of God and who He is and who He is in you and what He wants for you. It opens doors of heaven for you so you can hear the voice of God more clearly so that the Holy Spirit can lead you more easily in your life rather than that tug of war with the Spirit of God and with the, the flesh and the Spirit, that war that Paul talked about inside of himself. All of a sudden, it becomes easier and easier to run the race to win, casting off the weights that so easily beset us. So God wants us to eat of that and to allow it to have that effect in our life. And again, uh, God's, God's word is full of joy, but it's also full of conviction. So it could be either bitterness, you know, hard times in our lives that we need to change. You know, that's a hard time spiritually when I need to change and I'm fighting against it. Or I need to go do something that my flesh doesn't want to do. Or I get the joy of the Lord because his word is so exciting of what he's offering me. So we need have both both examples in the Word of God. We saw Ezekiel eat the Word of God also. And uh, so God has shown this throughout His Word that we need to eat, devour. He tells us to rightly divide the Word of Truth. If you will, that's devouring it. That's knowing the fullness of it, getting the depth of that Word and letting it have its way in our life to bring change in us. Amen? Uh, because I don't want to be the same Christian I was when I was 13. I want to be uh, more knowledgeable. I want to know him better. I want to know him more. I want to be serving him in a greater extent. And that's how we should be every day of our life. What, what more can I do for you, Lord God? What more can I experience in you? I don't want to just dine and dash. I, don't just, I, I want to pay the cost. I want to pay the price to, to get where I need to be in you. You know, most of us, I've never dined and dashed in a restaurant, but I know people who have. You know, I'm always willing to pay the price for the food that I get. And uh, it's the same thing with the Word of God. If we're willing to pay the price to receive this as life, then we're always, we're always getting our meal. And that meal is nurturing us and taking care of us and strengthening us. So praise God. Let's not be those who don't want to pay the cost, but let's pay the price and build this house the way God wants us to. In Matthew 4.4, 4, uh, the word of the Lord uh, talks to us. And uh, God is so good to us because, again, his word is his currency. It's what causes his kingdom to move, his hand to move for us. It's what brings the riches of heaven into our lives. And in 4.4, 4, uh, but, but he answered and said, Jesus answered the enemy and said, It is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Our, our way of making a living spiritually is by receiving what's coming, proceeding out of the mouth of God. 
The revelation you need to get from this scripture is you can't live in the spirit without the word of God speaking to you, you reading it, it's being spoken to you, you're devouring it, you're eating it, you're consuming it, you're letting it have its effect and renew your mind. We put on Christ by the renewing of our mind. When we do that, then we're, we're, we're becoming more like the spiritual man and woman that God created us to be because now we're living by the word that is proceeding. You see, that's present tense. It's not past tense. It's not future tense. It's present tense. A word that is proceeding out of the mouth of God. What is God saying to you today? Well, many people want to hear the voice of the Spirit, and that's awesome, and that's wonderful when it happens. But folks, he put an entire book together for us. He bound it. He put it together. He wrote it. He authored it. He inspired it. God will speak to you more out of this Bible than he will outside of it. Because what happens when he speaks outside of the Bible and starts talking to us? He's confirming what the Bible says. He's confirming what his word is saying. And he may be giving us specifics on how to accomplish it or what to do. But folks, it's all based and rooted in the Word of God, the written Word of God, that as we read it, it becomes the spiritual Word of God. It becomes life inside of us. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. That becomes life and healing flows inside of us. Confess Jesus with your mouth. Believe in your heart and confess with your tongue that Jesus Christ is Lord and thou shalt be saved. Salvation came that way. And all of God's delivering, all of God's power, all of God's miracles, all of, of God's uh, supply for us is given the same exact way. When we eat this word, really eat it and consume it and allow it to have its way. Jesus literally said that to the enemy. Man shall not live by earthly bread, but by every word that is proceeding out of the mouth of God. That's how we live in the spiritual realm while we walk in the fleshly realm. We, we have to overcome through the spirit, through the word of God. And God said, my, Jesus said, my word is spirit and it is life. It's your life. Your life is hidden in Christ, the living word of God. So he's speaking to us and he's saying, dine on this and, and sit back after you've eaten it and meditate on it. Think upon it. Joshua said, I will meditate upon thy word day and night that I might be able to do all that is written in this word. He said, I want to do all that is written in the word of God. And so he said, I meditate upon it day and night. I'm not just going to eat and run and go on with my life because my life is in his word. It is the living word of God proceeding out of the mouth of God. This written word is here on this page. But as you read it and God speaks it to you, the spirit quickens it inside of you. It becomes your food. It becomes your manna. It becomes your currency in the spiritual arena because it's what's going to save you when you get into various temptations. It's what's going to deliver you out of those. It's what's going to give you the faith to overcome. For faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That hearing, if you will, is rhema. It's revelation. It is what happened to John as he ate the word. He got a revelation to prophesy. Well, as we eat the word, we're going to get revelation to prophesy, to teach, to minister the word of God, to live it in our own lives and overcome our own flesh and our own carnal minds and begin to be more like Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. So it's so important that we see that Jesus lived this way. And he said that's how he was going to find life was by the word of God. Therefore, we should do the same. Amen. And then over in Hebrews, the word of the Lord is, again, very powerful to us in chapter 5. And beginning in verse 12, it says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. 
For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Hallelujah. He says that's a mature person, able to discern both good and evil. And that's not only including what we see outside of us, but inside of us. So many Christians can point out the sins of others, but do not see themselves in their sin and in their critical spirit. They don't see themselves in their judgment spirit. They don't even judge themselves if they, they lie or do something they know is wrong. They simply say, God, forgive me, and they sort of pass over because, again, they're just dining and dashing. If you truly repent, love abhorreth evil. God's love abhors evil. And so there's going to be a change in you. It's not going to be just, you know, I sinned and I'm sorry. You're going to abhor that, which means you'll truly repent and turn 180 degrees and walk away. So God is, is speaking to us about, you know, this word is, is to be devoured. And yes, milk is good for babies. Milk is good for babies. I even like a glass of milk with a cookie in the evening. But it's not my main meal. It's not all or only what I'm drinking or eating. And so he said, if you're just drinking milk, you're a baby. You know, just think of uh, when you had children and, uh, you know, they wanted milk. And that's what they could eat. That's what they could tolerate. But as they ate milk, eventually they wanted some food. They wanted some solid food. And uh, so you started giving them solid food. And it progressed until they could eat the steak and the potatoes and the vegetables and all the other things. But we need to also be growing in the Lord like that and allowing God to challenge us. You see, I don't think, I don't think that, uh, that some people like to be challenged spiritually. They just, they just want to grow their way and do their thing. And they don't want God to challenge them. And they don't want anyone to bring up a word that would challenge them and their belief system. But yet, we should be challenged. We should be testing the word that we believe. We should be devouring the word of God so that if God needs to change us or renew our mind or change our mind, that it would happen in our life. Can't do that by dining and dashing. Again, the, the dash means that we're, we're there, we're eating quickly, we're looking for the opportunity to leave without getting the check or without paying the check anyway. And so we're not there to, to just, just to, to eat and meditate on it and enjoy the ambiance of the place that we're at and the food that we're having and the fellowship uh, with the people there. We're, we're just sort of hit and miss. Let's get out of here. Well, God wants us to, to live in the riches of his spirit, in the riches of his life. And he, he's speaking to this church in the book of Hebrews, and he's telling them you should be teachers by now. Every one of you should be teaching the Word of God. And he's not just talking about teaching a simple, basic truth, which is good and awesome, and we need to teach those things. But he's talking about you need to be in the deep Word, in the meat of the Word of God, in the solid food for mature people, because we're going to be raising up people. You start beginners in the basics, in the milk, but you need to know how to teach the solid food to get them to grow. So God is saying it's all part of life. This is where your life is flourishing. This is the, the fountain of life is the word of God, is the solid word of God, the solid food, the meat of the word of God. It's the milk, it's the water, it's the meat, it's the bread. Hallelujah. It's everything we need to grow and mature. So as we're coming to this Christmas time of year, we really need to think about our lives because God gave us a very special gift. He gave us Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. He gave us his life that we might have life. You know, we're out buying presents for one another and we're going to exchange gifts, all of those things. But God gave us a gift and God wants to exchange with you. He gave you his son and he's given you the living word and he wants you to take that gift 
and then turn around and live it and give it back to him by glorifying him in the way you live, the way you talk, in the joy you have in your heart and in your life. You know, a person smiling is a lot better looking than someone that's frowning. You know, I, I'm smiling at you now and I hope it looks good because it feels good inside of me to have the joy of the Lord and the rejoicing and the gladness that his word is to me, to hear his voice speak to me and give me a message and then come to that, that word that he's given me and meditate on it and let it just move in my heart and to rejoice that I've already done that over the years in my life and that I have something to give out, to pour out. I have something to depend upon when everything seems to be going wrong. You can have absolutely nothing, but if you have God's word, if you have his son, the Holy Spirit in him, no matter what's happening, greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. No matter what, how little you have, he'll supply the meal. He'll supply the meal. And he just asks you to pay the cost of the meal. And what is that cost? To allow his word to have its way in your life. To have his word bring you to salvation if you're not saved. To have you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and the wonder and the power of his blood. To have you know that after you're saved, he has so much for you. You have an inheritance in God. And what he wants to do in your life. Again, we can lose sight of this, folks, because of all the things going on around us in this world. But that's just the enemy distracting us, just like that antelope went to the water hole and some monkey sounded an alarm that a lion was on its way. And he was distracted and he ran and didn't get the water that he needed. Well, you see, there's a lion already with you. He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. And you can drink of his water. And if the enemy comes around as a roaring lion and he has no teeth because God knocked him out, the lion of Judah will protect you. So don't be afraid. Don't get distracted. Don't get pulled away from this awesome meal that God has given us to celebrate. We celebrate his birth uh, during this time. Celebrate this awesome meal called Jesus, the living word of God. Meditate on it. Don't just eat a few scriptures and run out. Be the same old person you've been for 10 years. Eat the word. Devour the word. And then begin to prophesy or to rejoice with trembling and have great joy in your life. Praise the Lord. Well, folks, I'm still standing on the promise of the prophets for this end time. I'm still standing believing that God's going to do something awesome and great. Uh, here in December, the first part of January. So stand with me. I think next year's going to be, I've been telling you, I think next year's going to be a tough year for Christians. There's going to be much more restriction and persecution coming our way. But it's also going to be the great, greatest year because in the midst of all that, Christians rise to the occasion because God, Jesus, rises to the occasion inside of us. The Holy Spirit stirs us up and gives us an abundance of life. So yeah, it may get harder on our flesh and harder on our mind, but if we'll renew our mind, live in the word, be led by the spirit of God, you're gonna see 2021 being a great spiritual year in the midst of adversity. Well, God bless you. I pray that God's peace and joy is all upon you and that you rest good tonight and uh, that you celebrate our king who has come and get ready because he's coming again. Hallelujah. God bless.